Hello, hello, my crafty friends. This is Amanda, back with Molly Call Creations. We are on day number five of our 12 days of Christmas DIYs, and today's theme is holiday signs. So up first, I am taking this little wood sign from Hobby Lobby. It is just in their wood pile section, unfinished wood. It was $7.99. And y'all know I got that 40% off, of course. Nobody's buying wood from Hobby Lobby if it's not 40% off. But it was already framed and it was the right size. So I buy them all the time. In fact, when I use one, I replace it because they always come in handy. Then I cut this little stencil of the nativity uh, from my Cricut and I just sized it up in Cricut's design space I cut it out and now I'm just getting some transfer paper to uh, apply it, of course. And this was a design already in Cricut design space. I did not create it. It is not my own and very accessible if you have Cricut access. Now, for all of you uh, that don't use a Cricut or uh, don't like your Cricut, these stencils are readily available on Amazon. I, in fact, just ordered like maybe like a 12 pack of them and they were like super cheap. So I'm excited to use those. So for this These sign, are the two metallic paints that I'm using. The uh, I think it's called metallic chocolate and metallic gold. Now I'm just kind of squeezing my stencil in here, trying to get it lined up properly. You'll see over there on the left, I think it's like a donkey or a mule and the little sheep. Um, they aren't flush with the bottom, so um, after I do the stencil, I kind of add them a little bit of ground to sit on. I don't know. Anyways, but it looks crooked. It's actually not. And I'm going to do the majority of our stencil in the chocolate. I'm just using one of those little makeup sp sponge. Yeah, a makeup sponge. And I am just ever so lightly going around with it. And I'm just confirming the name. Yes, it's Fulcart Metallic Chocolate. And it is super beautiful and shiny. It has little speckles of almost looks like glitter in it, but it, the beauty of it is it is no glitter involved. And the little uh, stars, I am going to come back in with it is also by Folk Art, and it is the metallic antique gold, which is also equally as beautiful. I have been using them a quite a bit this season, and will probably continue to do so. So this was a very easy project, very inexpensive project. You could make a lot of these if you had some time and you could even sell them. Give them out to uh, your family members for gifts. Everyone always likes to remember the real meaning of Christmas. You know, we get caught up in the magic of it all and the fun and the gifts and all the things, Santa, you know, and, but we always try to remember the real meaning of Christmas and how beautiful that in fact is. And I am finishing this up by, I wanted to darken, and this is just an extra step, totally unnecessary, but I wanted to use some of the chocolate metallic paint and just go over the top of that frame. So that is all I did. And this one is finished, but so quick, so easy, and beautiful. On to our next project. This is a very rough piece of wood. I cut it out in the fall. I made like a barn in this same shape, 
um, and I put it in with like my fall tear tray but I thought it also could kind of go with like a Christmas theme and as I said this wood is rough I cut it with a jigsaw it has been sanded but it is still just a rough piece of wood I'm painting it black and then I'm just using uh, It's not even chalk paint, it's acrylic paint. Maybe that's why it didn't distress back as, as well as I wanted it to. So I'm painting both sides. On this other side though, I do decide to add a little bit of water. Because I did kind of want some of that wood grain to show. But on the other side, even after I used a baby wipe and um, paper towel, like it really did not distress back much. So for this one I'm adding a little bit of water and I do get uh, more of the effect that I was going for and just kind of mixing the paint and the water giving it a good amount of coverage but also leaving a little bit of the wood grain now this is just my style my taste not everybody's but that's what I'm doing and I do have to let this dry because, you know, now I have saturated it with water. But once we do that, we are going to add another decal. Also cut from Cricut Design Space. It says, Oh Holy Night. Stars are brightly shining. And I weeded everything off camera just in essence of I don't want to waste your all's time and I'm grateful that anybody watches me do anything but anyway this was both of these were really easy to weed there was nothing intricate or tricky about it so it wasn't a big deal and this kind of wood this really rough type of wood that isn't super smooth does not always take well to vinyl or what in my case I'm using stencil vinyl and so you sometimes have to fight with it a little bit to get it to lay down and it also doesn't always stencil that well because of the little grooves in the wood you know it's not a flat wood it's not a smooth wood but to me, that's just the beauty of using scrap wood. So I, I'm just kind of okay with it. But if you're looking for a very clean, crisp stencil in this case, it's not going to happen. No matter what I do, I can pull off all the tricks and it's not going to happen. But it does turn out, in my mind, it turns out beautiful. I'm using white. It is a full cart as well. Chalk paint and it's called Cottage White. I like this white because it's a pretty bright white. It's not a off white, but it's not a stark, stark white. But I realized I cut my stencil just a little short on that side. So I had to go to the effort of laying down some tape so I don't mess up the black. Then I realized I cut myself short on all three sides. So just take the extra step, put your tape down so you don't mess up your edges. I always try to like shortcut that step but then I regret it because I gotta do a lot of touching up and fixing. In this case I'm just using one of those regular black sponge brushes. No rhyme or reason as to why I use one or the other. It's usually just kind of whatever's sitting next to me. I find that you can stencil with just about anything. Just keep your paint to a minimum and don't overdo it. And take your time. And you can really stencil with just about any brush or sponge I should say anyhow this one is 
done. I am just double checking that I got into all those little grooves. As I said, this is not going to be a clean, stark stencil, but it is what I knew it would look like. So it is what I had in mind. And I think it is so beautiful and it's going to go right along with our little manger scene the sign that we just made I'm pulling out the little innards of our letters and making sure not to smear anything because that is I pull the stencil off when it's still wet so that's always a potential mess up for me if I'm not careful so just be careful when you're pulling these up if you pull your stencil up when it's wet like I do and that's it I do hurry and go cut a star on my laser cutter because I felt like it needed a star at the top and I thought I was recording and here I go to turn my camera off and I realize it wasn't even on so but you didn't miss much I cut the little star and I painted it with the metallic antique gold and I glued it on. Nothing more to it than that. And sorry, I just thought I was recording when I wasn't, but it happens. I did use Gorilla Glue. Guess I wanted to show you what kind of glue that I used. But this one is complete. That's all you got to do for this one. This one was essentially free, but it's also beautiful. And other than the work with the jigsaw, it was super easy. And I love it. This is a sign that I made back in the fall with the Dollar Tree calendar. I actually was able to get my hands on three calendars this year and in all the years that I've been going to the Dollar Tree that's the first time I've ever gotten the calendars but anyways I'm going to reuse the frame that I made for it this was made out of poster board I did do a video on this if you want to see like more details on how it was created but it is pretty self-explanatory I cut the poster board, it's not the poster board, the foam core board, that's what it is. I cut it down to about the size of the calendar piece or calendar page and then I cut some one by two furring strips for my frame and I stained them. And I knew when I made this in the fall time that I would probably want to just reuse the frame for something at some point. It's not, you know, the best quality. It is made out of foam core and staples. So it isn't something I can sell, but it is something really, really cute that can be in my home and I can change it up season by season in literally minutes. So in this case, I'm not even replacing the foam core because I don't have any. So I'm just gluing the Christmas, the joy, right on top. I know that's ridiculous, but that's what I'm doing. Because you know what, next fall, I'll just use a different piece of the calendar. I got three of them. And they're all beautiful. Every every page in those Dollar Tree calendars is so cute. So why not change it up? All right, now I'm just gonna kind of line this back up. And the angle I had my ca camera at and the size of this just made it nearly impossible for you to even see me using, but I'm using a staple gun. That's it. I basically just make sure I glued it on right and then I flip everything over onto the back well I flip the front over because I want to staple on the back if that makes any sense but yeah after I was re-watching what I had filmed I realized you like we literally we can't see anything I did 
So I just kind of put a few staples here and there. I avoided the areas that I had already stapled where I pulled those staples out. And I just did that on all four sides. I didn't use any glue. It would have been easier to staple this had I been able to glue the frame to the front. But again, I want to reuse it. So I don't want to put any glue on it. I want to be able to take it apart. It was so easy taking it apart. Just prying out those staples was no big deal. And next time I probably ought to get some new foam core because that's probably going to wear down. But other than that, it worked out great. And then I even saw that clip there with the black around it because I had to use, when I did this originally, I used a black foam core board, which did, it didn't make any difference one way or another. But then I thought this would have looked really good with a black frame. Maybe I should paint the frame. But I didn't because I am running out of time, y'all. I'm dragging behind on my 12 days of DIYs and I need to move on and I want to do my best in every project but sometimes you gotta skip a step and it still looks beautiful I still love it and unless you touch it or like pick it up and or look at the back you you would never know this was made with a foam core poster board from the Dollar Tree and a two dollar well, it wasn't even a full f board. The one by two, it was like a half of a one by two, so that's like a dollar. The calendar was a dollar twenty-five divided by twelve, and the foam core was like a quarter of a dollar twenty-five. So, this project was so inexpensive, and I love it. This is project number four and our final project for today, and. This is a double-sided sign or board. I'm going to use this wood-grained side and we're going to do some chalk couture on it. This little uh, sign, it came from, like I said, chalk couture, but it came with the, if you remember, or if you watched my the candy cane peppermint video, with all the Rudolph's names, I mean, I'm sorry, all the reindeer's names. It came with that set. So I just cut it apart. It says, when what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. So cute. I am using the cherry chalk paste. And I want to paint it on, so I'm mixing it with a little bit of water. That paste is a little thick to just paint with but as you can see I did tape up my frame I don't want to ruin those edges I love the color of it and I am not gonna risk I always think oh I can do it without taping I'll just be really careful I'll stay in the lines nah how many times have I learned the hard way that no you're gonna make a mess <laughs> so anyways I'm trying to hurry and dry it. I'm trying to speed things up just as much as I can. I typically don't use heat to dry things because I normally have more time or even let them sit overnight or whatever. But this day, I don't. And it is all good. We are going to get out our fuzzing cloth, as always. I don't want this silk screen transfer to tear up that nice paint job that I just did. So I'm fuzzing it just a few times. It didn't seem particularly sticky to begin with. Some I will say, I don't know if it's just me, but some do seem stickier right out of the package than others, but this one wasn't too bad, but I'm just trying to get it lined up exactly. I mean, it fits perfectly, but I just don't want to have any overlap on one side or the other. And I'm keeping this simple. 
Y'all, I am just using the white chalk paste and going right over it. And I wanted to maybe add like a bow, something extra to the reindeer, but I didn't. I just had to tell myself, keep it simple, it's beautiful. And it really is. And it was so simple. Like, I mean, so simple. And I've mentioned before in previous videos, I must have let this set a little bit too long, or it took me too long to get all the way to the bottom, which I didn't feel like it did. I felt like I was quick on this one, because there was no details, it was all in one color. But if you see on the very top line, what I did first, it is lighter than the others. But I decided it's not worth trying to fix it and then making it worse. And I decided I might be the only one that even notices. I mean, my little kids aren't going to look at that and say, Mom, what happened to your first line of lettering? So I think sometimes we might be harder on ourselves than anyone else's. But this is what we ended up with. And y'all, I love to make signs. I could have made signs for days. I know a lot of people don't like signs anymore. They're like off trend, but not for me. I'm gonna keep making them. There will be more to come. I enjoy it and I think they're beautiful. This was a really fun video. We also have a really fun video coming up tomorrow. It is all about stockings. So I'm excited to see what everyone comes up with. Thank you again for watching and joining me and being my friend and thank you to brenda over at rustic and lace diy for hosting this collab with me and please 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 check out the playlist there are so many creators over there with different takes and styles and the way that things are done that you can receive so much inspiration from so many different people we will see you all tomorrow my friends have a great day